Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. And closer to home, we're now into the second week of September and Lloydminster students are back in class at both school districts. In our first Beyond the Classroom of the Year, we have an inside look at the Holy Rosary High School construction class. The new school year may have just started, but this class of grade 11 and 12 construction students are wasting no time getting started on their projects. They remember stuff, they're learning. I mean, safety is our primary focus here, but we're seven or eight days into the school year already and you can see the students are they hit the ground running they have tables made they're starting like we're wrapping up our first project students can start taking construction in grade eight gaining more experience each year once we get to senior level we have students making sheds hunting blinds ice fishing shacks uh, tables things that they'll take with them to university grade 12 student ethan flash used the skills he learned in construction when he competed in a skills competition in edmonton having to build a gazebo on his own in 14 hours flash says he'll keep those skills with him really gives you skills that you can use later in life if you ever need to build something in a pinch. Like if you don't want to go to the store and buy a chair, you can build a nice chair and you can look at it and say, yeah, I built that. Students of all skill levels have found success in this class. We do have students that are looking to pursue carpentry as a career. We, we've had some success with um, connecting them with summer jobs where they can actually build their apprenticeship hours and then We've had some students send off and they're off to Lakeland. They go from not being able to do stuff on their own to being able to do stuff on their own, like using the table saw, band saws, and skill saws. Students don't just work on personal projects. They have also helped make crosses for younger students, furniture for the HRHS expansion, and will make items for the public. That's it for this week, Beyond the Classroom. Experience learning in action at the Lakeland College Open House on October 20th and 21st at our Lloydminster and Vermilion campuses. Now if you're thinking about getting gas, maybe you should try and wait until next week when the Lloydminster and District Co-op hosts Fuel Good Day. Our Callan Dunlop has more on the event. Today I'm joined by Chase Scarf, who is the VP of Operations for the Lloydminster and District Co-op. And today we're talking about Fuel Good Day, which is coming up on September 19th. And to start, Chase, can you just give a little insight into what Fuel Good Day is? So Fuel Good Day is actually hosted across Western Canada. And so five cents from every liter sold is donated to a local charity. And so this is the seventh annual year that we've done this. And so we are going once again with the Lloyd Public School Division and the Lloyd Catholic School Division breakfast programs, which we have for the previous six years as well. Now, with this being the seventh annual Feel Good Day, can you speak on the changes that have transpired over the years? Well, uh, we've had to switch things up a little bit uh, in the past uh, due to some restrictions. This year, we're happy to announce again that uh, we'll also be hosting some on-site barbecues. And so those will be hosted by rural schools. Uh, there's Hillmond, Newburgh, Kitscotty, and Mar Wayne. Uh, one will be at each of our gas bar locations and they'll be raising funds for their own school division as well. So uh, it's great to see you can come out and get a burger and a pop and we donate all of the all of the materials, all the supplies for that, and they get 100% of the proceeds for that. So it's very exciting to have that back again this year. The Lloydminster and District Co-op is no stranger to being involved in the community. Can you give some insight into sort of what you guys have been doing over this past year? Um, one thing that I'm, you know, quite proud of from the from the marketplace or the fruit food side is all of the donations we do to some food rescue programs, such as the Olive Tree, uh, the Lloydminster Native Friendship Center, and some programs like that. Uh, a lot of food that, um, you know, would otherwise go to waste in some organizations, we can make good use of it in a community. Uh, and further to that, even uh, anything that doesn't meet, you know, that's not fit for human consumption, such as just cut ends and things like that. We partner with a program called Loop Resources, and that actually gets picked up by local farmers and can be used to feed uh, their livestock, things like that. So very little food waste actually occurs at our marketplace location, which we're quite proud of. 
What does the Lloyd Minster and District Co-op have planned for the rest of the year? Well, we've got some construction happening. Uh, we've got a new card lock location coming uh, in on Highway 21 near Maidstone, uh, which should be open for the fall here. And of course, you may have seen the car wash being built as well. We've got that, uh, which Musgrave agencies and uh, a lot of local contractors have been working very hard on that. Uh, they expect an opening for that is not until uh, early 2024, but we're very excited to have that, uh, you know, that progress that's being made there. Uh, exciting, getting, looking forward to opening that up. Were there any last things that you'd like to add? I just wanted to thank the community for the support over the last uh, last six years and, uh, you know, hope to see everybody out there again. We've got some very good community partners and everybody seems to step up when it uh, was for a good cause. And so we're really excited to see that. And again, thanks to all the, the members and the, and the community at large for that. Well, that covers everything. Thank you so much for taking the time, Chase. Take care. And Abby St. John is here for a look at weather. And today, Abby, it wasn't uh, bad weather. You know, it was pretty yeah. nice, but we got a little bit of, um, I wouldn't, I don't know if we're going to call it rain or it was spitting a little, a little bit. little drizzle, I think. Yeah, drizzle's a good word for it. The clouds definitely rolled in, sun peeking out here or there, but for the most part, it, it was a pretty cloudy day. And then we got just the tiny bit of rain. And I don't know if that will continue. There is a chance that we will see some more rain. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for right now, it kind of the sun kind of came peeking out a little bit and then it could come back but it was uh, not as sunny as the other days for sure and currently we are sitting at 19 degrees so it's not too too cold but it's definitely not super warm and then with those with that cloud coverage it, it does feel very very gloomy which isn't great to see but We've had a few, the past few days have been really, really nice out. So today, I'll take today being a gloomy day, uh, despite wanting that sun and thinking that we were going to get that sun. Uh, similar temperatures across the region in Alberta, 22 in Provost, they're sitting at the warmest, uh, 20 in Wainwright and in Vegreville, and then 19 in Vermilion, Edmonton, St. Paul, Bonneville, Cold Lake, and Lac La Biche, and then 18 out in Marwain. And then on the Saskatchewan side, a little bit warmer than what we're sitting at, 24 in Isle of Cross, 21 in uh, Green Lake and in Meadow Lake, 24 also in North Battleford, uh, 18 in Macklin. 20 in Maidstone and in Pierceland and 19 in St. Walberg. And then overnight tonight in North Battleford, it'll drop to 7 degrees. Mainly clear skies, but there may be a little bit of clouds here and there. But for the most part, it should remain fairly clear. And then tomorrow, raise back up to 20 degrees in North Battleford. Um, partially to mostly sunny days, just a hint of cloud. And then the wind will kind of increase throughout the day. Uh, and then tonight in Cold Lake will drop down to 7 degrees, uh, clear to partially cloudy skies in the evening, similar to uh, what North Battleford will experience tonight. And then tomorrow, 19 degrees, a little bit more breezier of a morning. Uh, otherwise, the sun will come out and there will be a few cloud coverage here and there. Uh, but for the most part, it should be a fairly sunny day out, despite a little bit of wind in the morning in early afternoon. Here in Lloydminster overnight, we will drop down to 6 degrees. However, it will be a very clear evening. It should clear up by the evening, uh, but it, the wind will start picking up later on in the night. And then tomorrow, we'll also have a daytime high of 19, what we saw today. Uh, but it should be mostly sunny with a little bit of wind. So definitely take, a, take note of that. It will be a little bit windier, so it may feel a little bit chillier. So definitely have a light jacket or a sweater with you if you are planning on going out outside or the kids at recess as well. And then over the next three days here in Lloydminster, uh, we have a high of 19 and a low of 5 for tomorrow. Uh, and then on Friday, we should have a lot of sun, plenty of sun, the high of 20 and a low of 7. And then Saturday should be very, very warm at 25 for the high and the 8 as the low. So that's nice to look forward to. We have a photo submission. Thank you so much to Heather who submitted this beautiful lake shot uh, green street. So thank you so much for submitting this photo. And if you want to see your weather photos on our show, definitely email us at weather at stingray.com. That is a look at your weather forecast, and we'll have an in-depth look later on in the show. Thanks for that, Abby. Stay with us. After the break, we'll have a look at today's market numbers. Moving 
on to sports now. The Lakeland Wrestlers men's soccer team started their regular season this past weekend. Our Thomas Wildman has more on their season home opener. The Wrestlers look to bounce back after a disappointing 3-1 road loss to the Nate Ooks when they took on the Concordia Thunder for their home opener. Early in the first half, at the 8th minute, Samuel Desumu Hothro opened up the scoring to give the wrestlers the lead. Only 7 minutes later, Ahmed Abu Baker tied it up for the Thunder. The rest of the first half, it was deadlocked at 1. In the first minute of the second half, Nathan Tran would score with help from Gavin Quinlan, and then the momentum kept going. Kristen Corcus's goal was then followed by a penalty kick for Nathan Tran, who was able to blast past the keeper. Cameron Holman did grab another goal for the Thunder, but another penalty kick goal for Nathan Tran and goal off a corner kick for Gavin Quinlan gave us our final score of 2-6, with Yassine Hassan getting player of the game for the wrestlers with two assists on the day, and he complimented how his team took over in the second half. It was all about actually just being confident and taking the player on, and because uh, in this first half, I would say, we were still just, we're, we had the ball, the possession and everything, but like we weren't attacking, we weren't threatening enough. And in the second half, the only advice was take the player on and we did. And we got the goals like that. Head coach Kevin Wagner also made some substitutions in the second half and is really happy with the depth his team has. Well, Concordia is a good uh, good squad, but what we recognized early on was that we were going to be a bit deeper. So uh, we made three changes at half and when, with the anticipation of let's go at them a bit to start with. Uh, we scored within 30 seconds, so it was a great way to start. Our, our substitutions uh, made an immediate impact on the scoreline in the first, uh, you know, the first really six minutes. So... Um, Today, finally, depth uh, was, was valuable for us. The wrestlers will hope to keep this momentum up as they head on the road to take on the Kings University Eagles. Thomas Wildman, Primetime, Local News. And now it's time for us to check in once again with Abby St. John for another look at weather. Thanks so much, Jace. As we saw today, it was a bit of a mixed bag, if you will. A little bit sunny in the morning, and then we got a lot of cloud coverage in the afternoon, and we saw a little bit of rainfall. Not too much, but definitely a little sprinkle. Uh, we're sitting at 19 degrees, so not as warm as what we saw the past couple of days, so it is a little bit more of a gloomier day, but the sun has been peeking out of those clouds here and there throughout the day, which is always nice. Across the region, it's similar in Alberta, uh, 21 in Red Deer, 19 in Rocky Mountain House, Edmonton, Edson, uh, and Athabasca, 17 in Jasper, and 18 in Whitecourt. And then on the Saskatchewan side, they're sitting a lot warmer than what we are, uh, 21 in Meadow Lake, 24 North Battleford and in Prince Albert, uh, 22 in Malfort and 22 also in Saskatoon. And then if you take a look on northern temperatures in Saskatchewan, 21 in Laloche and Buffalo Narrows and up in Uranium City, 19 in South End Reindeer and in Stony Rapids and 23 in Wallison Lake. Glen Flon is sitting at 22. And then on the Alberta side, up north, 13 in High Level, 11 in Peace River, 17 in Grand Prairie, 15 in Fort Chippewan, Fort McMurray sitting at 21 degrees, and then Slave Lake is at 19. And then if we go down south uh, in Alberta, 23 in Medicine Hat, 19 in Coronation and Lethbridge, 20 in Calgary, and then Banff is sitting at 17. So they're also seeing cooler temperatures uh, down south as well as on the Saskatchewan side. A few places are experiencing those kind of cooler temperatures uh, lower than 20. 21 in Kindersley and Swift Current, 24 in Estevan, and then 17 in Moose Jaw, 16 in Regina, and 19 out in Yorkton. Overnight tonight in North Battleford, it'll drop to 7 degrees as your evening temperature. Mainly clear skies, but there may be a few cloud cover, uh, clouds here and there. But for the most part, it should remain fairly clear. And then in Cold Lake, same thing. It should be clear with a little bit of cloud coverage with a low of 7 degrees overnight tonight. And then overnight tonight across the region, 6 degrees in Meadow Lake, 8 in Bonneville and Provost, 10 in Isla Cross, and 6 uh, in Paradise Hill. All those areas should be should remain clear overnight. However, in Isla Cross, uh, expect some a couple of showers late in the evening. 
And then more overnight temperatures, 7 in Miranam, 8 in Pearsland and Calgary, and 6 in Unity and Wainwright. Most, most regions are sitting very clear, a little bit more cloud coverage in Calgary and in Pearsland, but other than that, it should be a very nice evening. And then overnight tonight, we will drop down to 6 degrees here in Lloydminster. Remain fairly clear overnight, however, the breeze will start to pick up later on in the evening. And then if you take a look for the next seven days, a high of 19 and a low of 15 for tomorrow with a mix of sun and cloud. And then on Friday, it should be a very pleasant and sunny day out with a high of 20 and a low of 7. And then on Saturday, we have a very, very nice warm and sunny day with a high of 25 and a low of 8. On Sunday, a little bit more cloud coverage, but it's still fairly warm with a high of 22 and a low of 8 as well. And then on Monday to start your week off, again, a high of 21 and a low of 3. And the clouds will roll in throughout the day. So it will start to turn more cloudy on as the day goes. And on Tuesday, same thing. It'll turn more cloudy on as the day goes. And it's going to be a little bit cooler with a high of 16 and a low of 3. And then the 16 is also our daytime high for next Wednesday with a mix of sun and cloud. But it should remain fairly sunny with a low of 6 degrees. That is a look at your evening weather forecast. Our Jace Mackey will have more news coming up after the break. here today by Jacqueline Weed with Big Brothers Big Sisters here in Lloydminster. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Of course, we love having you here. Now, you guys are having a big barbecue on September 18th. Tell me a little bit about what this barbecue is and what people can expect from it. So September is Big Brother Big Sister month, so we focus a little more heavily on recruitment, trying to get mentors for all of our programs. So as part of that, we had um, one of our community partners, uh, Canadian Natural, uh, said that they would like to do something for us. So they agreed to sponsor the barbecue for us. So we're having a big barbecue. Um, it's, at, it's at our Big Brothers Big Sisters office, and it's just a chance for everyone in the community to stop by over lunch, um, take a look at what we've got going on in the office, learn about some of our programs, and maybe learn about how to make a big difference as a mentor. That sounds super fun and a great way for people to come together and learn more about what you guys do here in this community. Now, you said that this month is Big Brothers and Big Sisters Month. What is the significance of a whole month dedicated to the organization? It's important because we're all across Canada sharing the same messages for the whole month. So our campaign this year is Mentorship Equals, which is focusing on the mathematical relationship that builds the resilience for the kids. So you plus them equals resilience. So you'll see our campaign like today, uh, Mentorship Equals Laughing Out Loud or Laughing Until You Can't Stop, something like that. So um, we've had all of all of this research done and this campaign developed for us, which is fantastic. Um, but really it just comes down to the positive, consistent role model in their life. So we're excited that we have a whole month to celebrate it. Yes, that is certainly awesome and important to have, not just in our community, but across Canada. For the barbecue, I believe that it is cash by donation. Tell me a little bit about how that works and what people should know if they want to have some barbecue. So the barbecue is 11.30 to 1.30 at our office, um, and the cost is by donation. So whatever they feel that they would like to donate for their burger or hot dog or both and their drinks um, is totally okay with us. Uh, we do also have the option that um, if businesses are a little tight on time but still want to support us, they can pre-order and then just send somebody to pick it up and make the donation when they come. So if businesses would like to pre-order or non-businesses, I guess anyone, uh, would like to pre-order, they can call the office and we can get an order form to them. 
And what will the money raised at this barbecue be going towards? All the money that we raise in our agency goes towards mentoring programs. So uh, creating those life-changing mentoring relationships and then supporting them on their journey along the way. So uh, it's always stays here in our community to help the kids that are part of our agency in our community. It sounds like it's going to be a very fun day for you and for the organization and people who do support you guys, which is awesome. Is there anything else you would like to add that I may have missed? That it's really easy to be a mentor. You know, again, our, our, our campaign this month is focusing on that. You know, it's not about that you have to have a lesson plan or you have to have special skills. It's just having fun and being there together, you know, and I think the mentors get just about as much out of it as the kids do. Uh, usually when a mentor comes in to sign up, they are all about helping the kids, but along that journey, they, I think, grow as much as the kids do and get an opportunity to have fun doing things that interest them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And I wish you the best of luck for the barbecue and for the whole month of September. I think it's awesome that Big Brothers and Big Sisters has their own month to really push out their message and get people involved. So thank you so much. Thanks. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery, downtown Lloydminster. Well, after a bit of a break, we have a familiar face here again on Primetime Local News. Stephanie Dobson is with us. Stephanie is a lawyer and mediator at Hanka Divorce Law and Mediation. Stephanie, it's great to see you again. Thanks. Thanks for having me again, Stacey. Well, we are going to do a bit of a theme for the rest of this month, and it's going mm -hmm. to be talking about the negotiation process. So basically, to start, we're going to uh, basically talk about what process options means. And I know there's mm -hmm. so much that is involved with divorce and separation. I think that people don't realize a lot of times until they get into it. So let's start out by mm -hmm. talking about court. Uh, Basically, when people are starting this process, I think a lot of them think they have to go through court. But when it comes down to it, are there some other options besides going through the court process? Yeah. And, you know, Stacey, I thought this would be an interesting topic because most often when people are separating or divorcing, they're really thinking first about the substance of their issue. So what do I need to think about for finances? Where should I be living? What's my parenting schedule? So they're thinking substantively, which is a good start. But what I usually try to do is at the very beginning is to pull people back a little bit um, after we've talked about content and, and substance is to pull people back and say, look, you have some options here as to how you pro proceed. Now, in our office, we stay out of court completely. So that's all of the services that we provide. So I wanted to highlight a few of those um, for people who might think, hey, maybe I can stay out of the courthouse. So the first one is what I call your DIY option, sort of the Home Depot option. So um, it's it's where spouses will negotiate kind of at the kitchen table is what I call it. Um, and this is often where spouses will start. So they'll start by talking about, you know, what do we substantively want to do um, going forward? Usually there's some professional assistance though that's required. If people come in and they say that, you know, they've done a lot of the DIY option, usually they've done about 70% of it. If if they think they've done hundred percent, it's usually about 70% and they haven't right. thought of certain things. So then we can look at involving a professional. So there's either mediation or collaborative divorce. And next week, we're going to go into those in a lot more detail, but just very generally here today. Mediation is an option which involves one professional who's neutral, so not on one spouse or the other spouse's side, and they that mediator will help both spouses to arrive at resolution, what I call kind of bridging the gap between the parties as far as perhaps some of that DIY stuff. Then we go on to collaborative divorce, and that's an option which involves each spouse getting their own lawyer. So sometimes people want to have an advocate on their side, and they do want to hire a lawyer. They don't want one neutral person. And so in the collaborative divorce, resolution happens by both lawyers and both spouses working together 
towards that mutually agreeable resolution. So we focus in the collaborative divorce on the children and the focus of, the, of an effective uh, future co-parenting relationship. Well, as always, there's lots to, to dig into with these subjects, Stephanie, but let's focus on the court. And if, if you can stay out of court with this process, what are some of the benefits to being able to do that? Well, there's four things I want to highlight here. So the first one is we arrive at resolution a lot more quickly. So the average of my files um, in my office would be somewhere between two months and six months to achieve some kind of a resolution. And sometimes that depends on everyone's calendar more so than the conflict level. Um, whereas it's usually years in a, in a court process. Second one is privacy. So all negotiations outside of the courtroom remain completely private and confidential, whether it's in mediation or in the collaborative process. Third, cost savings. So in preparation for any kind of a court application or a trial, that we're talking tens of thousands of dollars um, by the time you get to trial. Out of court options like collaborative divorce and mediation focus on resolving uh, matters by attending meeting by meeting. So I said earlier, you know, mediation, it's either three people meeting together or in collaborative divorce, it's four people meeting together, lawyers and spouses. And we can resolve your matter meeting by meeting by meeting. And so really, you're only paying for a two hour meeting if the, if um, if that's how long we meet. And then the fourth one is resolution stays in your, you stay in the driver's seat. So it stays in your family's hands. So it's much easier often to accept resolution if it's come to by agreement, as opposed to something that's been imposed by a judge where it's more of a win-lose situation. And one, one parent really doesn't usually like the result of, of the court system. Now, going through this process, Stephanie, it sometimes happens where the spouses do not agree on the process. So what happens if one wants to go through the court system, but the other does not? Well, it takes two to tango, says the saying. So you have a choice to negotiate to stay out of that courtroom, but you have a right to litigate. So I often say it's not if you get to resolution, it's how you get to resolution. And so if one party is not willing to stay out of the court system and pushes towards that direction, unfortunately, um, you may need to go that direction. Though even sometimes when we're in a litigation process, um, some uh, very often you can resolve it before it even gets into a court. Um, but what I often find is that once people understand the benefits of staying out of court and what it means to stay out of court, often that reluctance can go away. So at our office, what we do is we offer a five minute free call to both spouses, as long as both spouses don't have lawyers yet. And we try to help to explain what staying out of court means, because so often people don't actually understand that the, this is even a thing. All right, Stephanie. Well, good information as always, and we're so glad to have you back. So we'll be back again <laughs> next week to continue this conversation. Thanks again for joining me. Yeah, thanks, Stacey. And before we go tonight on Primetime Local News, the MTV Music Video Awards were handed out in New Jersey, and it's probably no surprise who took home the top prize. And the VMA goes to... Taylor Swift! Well, you heard it there. Taylor Swift won Video of the Year for Anti-Hero. It's the second consecutive year she's captured the award, it was just one of four trophies she took home at the award show. Well, congratulations to Taylor Swift. I know a lot of people, a lot of Swifties out there, I'm sure are happy she seems to be uh, having a moment right now. Yeah, she's certainly taken over everybody's feed, whether or not you want it on there or not. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, she, I, she's been a big name for years. It's no surprise that she's still getting recognition. I don't listen to her music. Um, yeah. But a lot of people do. A lot of do, people do, clearly. And her tour has been taken off. So, I mean, she's going to keep winning them. Yeah, you go, girl. That's all the time we have for this edition of Primetime Local News. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow. Have a great night.